What are you doing? I'm just, I don't know, man. I'm just hanging out. <laughs> hanging out, man. What are you doing? Dude, it's been a long day here, bro. Has it? Yeah, I was working on a new video for some knot stuff, and uh, it ended up being one I thought I could knock out in a couple hours, and it ended up being an all day. Ooh. Well, but let, let, let me tell you. Oh, yeah, well, let me tell you something. If you happen to do a video over – over anything that has to do with bed fishing and you say, Hey, I don't, I don't think catching fish off of bed is a bad idea. And you never say anything about keeping it or putting the fillet knife to it or all that stuff. They instantly go there. They instantly comment. It's horrible for the lake. Keeping them they all, they all, that's all they argue about is keeping them. Like I, I did a 20 minute video and I, I never once said, I, I, I talked the whole time about releasing them. And they were all arguing to me about, like, you should never keep fish. And I'm like, still trying to figure out where I said it. But, okay. Just Dude, a, just fair warning. I got in your comments earlier, and I actually saw where a guy was talking about how you uh, basically aborted a bass or something. Like, you were – I I mean, that was basically what he was saying, that you were aborting bass by catching them or something. Oh, yeah. Like, oh, oh I had one that he got really mad at me. He got really mad at, at what I was trying to say that – a 10 pound I, i'm killing 10 pounders yeah that's, what, that's what i'm what talking about funny yeah but what was funny i was like hey man you know when a 10 pounder has eggs they don't they don't come out of the out of the fish's belly at 10 pounds you know they're small so like how do you know if you're not catching a three pounder that's two years old you know that's going to grow up to be a 10 pounder and you gut hook them and you kill it like isn't that the same thing as killing a 10 pounder like the genetics that that went that went like flew past that dude's head. Like I mean, he like I couldn't couldn't fathom that. That I'm like, how do you know if you're killing good genetics or bad genetics? I'm like, and when did I ever say about killing anything? I'm like, it was just, I who cares about that? Listen, I'm gonna brag, I'm gonna brag about myself for about one second because I actually picked your boy, dude. I picked your boy. You did. Like you've been picking them, and, and and I'm like, man, and and I almost got away from it. I, I didn't almost get away from it. I'm like, man, I I just remembered everything that went down last year, and I was like, man, and when he left, when he left, and like that feeling when you leave a tournament, knowing you, I I'm, I didn't talk to him, but I think he messed up, right? I think something in there, like he saw where he went wrong, and I and he went back up there and freaking won that BFL. Drove whatever he did. Yeah. And I said, man, he's going to be tough. He's going to be like, but so tell me, like, tell me about it. Like what? And if y'all don't know, we're talking about fantasy fishing. Yeah. Like, I, so we all picked everyone and we, we all kind of picked Schmidt um, out of the bracket. But I picked him to win the entire event. And so, and I had four, I had four of my five guys in the top seven or six. Like it is the best best week I've ever had, but I want to I want to hear more about this Schmidt thing because if y'all don't know, Holman used to room with them. They're pretty good buds, and I, I haven't got to talk to you about it. Like, like tell me about tell me about Brian. Like, tell me about him. Well, you know, like on the last two years that we've been doing this fantasy fishing, I'm always taking him because he'll be in a group B or C or wherever he's at, but he's like one of the least picked, and like he's dangerous anywhere, right? Um. The guys won more coasters than anyone on the planet. Toyotas, yep. whatever you want to call them, I'm sure his first ones were probably Everstarts or something. I don't know. Quite a while ago, um, he's got an FLW tour win. Were you there whenever he won the tour event? Were you up in M Mississippi River? Was that the year before? No, no, no. He started? no. So he won one up there when we were rooming together, and uh, he came really close to winning one at Okeechobee uh, FLW tour event. That might have been the very first event that you fished. The Okeechobee one, yes. Yeah, he came really close to winning that one. He's got some stuff that's just in his wheelhouse, and you just see it over and over and over, kind of like you and the rest of us, you know. But he's 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 got a couple of ponds. But then that northern deal stands out because he is a northern fisherman, I guess, being from Maryland. And, but he's 
basically a tidal river fisherman. I know. But, man, he's got that Champlain thing locked down, dude. But, like, locked. You know what let, I mean? Let, what, so, so you made a comment uh, uh, when we did that open deal about, I can't believe they're going to let Scott and David Dudley sit on that one rock, you know, that one rock pile that, you know, or whatever it is, you know, and I was sitting here going, I don't know about that. There's, there's certain lakes around the country that I'm not saying they don't change, but what happens is, is, is they, they like Rayburn, you come to Rayburn, you've never caught fish the same way. You, like every single time you come here, you have to do something semi different. Like, it's not like, Oh, I can go to this stretch and catch them. Like you might not ever catch them down that stretch again or whatever. Right. It's like when I was rooming with thrift, he, he talked about, he was like, yeah, man, I, I didn't know this until after day one, you know, he didn't let on to it, which no big deal. But he was like, it, on one of those days, he just drove around and looked for rock piles all day long. That's all he did. I don't even know if he really even did it in the tournament, but he wasted a whole entire day. And I was like, man, how do you waste a day up there? Well, golly. He goes and he has this one spot he starts on in the morning where he catches 17 pounds, where six pound largemouth and four pound smallmouth are eating his, his top water every cast. And he's done that almost every time he goes there. Well, when you start off with that kind of knowledge, yeah, I'm just assuming Schmidt's got a little bit of that knowledge that, that carries over because you got to think about it. There's not a bunch of guys from Champlain that that's their home lake fishing the elites. Right. For sure. You know, so, I mean, he's got – he's one step above you the minute he – I mean, before you even freaking set foot on that place. Yeah, and that place is so big, right? Yes. I mean, it's so big. He's got a lot of history there. Like, you know, he won an open there a few years back. Um, you know, like you said, he got in his truck and basically a plane and had to fly back from some event overnight just so he could enter a daggum BFL up there. I mean, that's how much confidence he has, right? Um and he won it. That was a couple of years ago. He he uh he's got a lot of history there. That place is so big. And then he he fishes at Lake Y too. That's the thing. Is like he he knows Ticonderoga and he knows it well. And he's had phenomenal tournaments down there. He can catch the smallmouth all the way to the north end, which is where he won the open um in the fall. And he catches them in the middle. He catches them throughout that entire impoundment and he catches them all different times of the year. So He's got he's got it down there, just like what you're talking thrifty. They've got they've got more than just one or two deals going. Like but, he's but, got it dialed in. L- listen, there there's some, you brought up thrift just now. Um, thrift is, and I've only got to hang around thrift on occasion. Got to room with them. I learned a lot when I roomed with them. Uh, like I learned not fishing wise. I just learned a lot about the guy. Like thrift is thrift is a is a pretty cool cool guy. Like, tell me about – like, I don't know Schmidt like you do. Like, I don't even – I've never even got to talk to him that much. But he's – he's a – he's unique. Is that yeah, a good word? Yeah, he's he's uh, special, you know. I mean, you stayed with a lot of guys, right, mm-hmm. through the years. And there's one or two or three that stand out, especially when they're really in their prime and really hooked up. Um and you only meet a couple of guys, you know, you don't meet a lot like that in life. I'm talking about really special, you know what I mean? And, and he's one of those guys, like he's like thrift. Um, he, he never quits. Like his mind is always on how do I catch another bass, whether it's first thing in the morning before a day of practice, or if it's, you know, fourth night in after the first or second day of the tournament, that guy's still just grinding. Like you and I talked about this, like you and I both are very much the same. We have to have some downtime away from thinking about how to catch a bass. So like in the evenings, you and I both enjoy cooking and cutting up and joking around and kind of doing something besides trying to figure out that puzzle. Right. Because we've spent from daylight till dark on that puzzle. And we need some time away from it. You and I both are the exact same about this. He doesn't need that time. He doesn't ever need five minutes. Like, it never stops for him. Um, That's something you're just born with, right? And I'm not saying that it's more gifted to be that way than it is to be like you and I are. 
but their mind is more constantly on the puzzle than mine and yours is. Like I've been around both of you a tremendous amount, and I know that you're very much like me, and I know why you're like that. He's not. He's 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 different in the aspect of he just doesn't reach that burnout stage mentally. He rests differently. He uh, he's an early to bed guy. He doesn't stay up late. Um, he doesn't drink beer at all. Um, he's just one of those guys that just doesn't really care for it very much. Um, I cook every night. You know, we room together for a few years, and the dude doesn't even care what you eat. Like, you know, some of the guys are like, holy crap, man. You know, they like staying with Holman because he's like cooking all this good stuff. And then you got them guys that really could just – I mean, they like it, but they could, they don't really care. I mean, he like, would be the worst guy to go to the grocery store with, right? Oh, dude. <laughs> Dove – so it was me, him, and Kurt Dove for a long time. And, and Billy Shelton, the four of us were together. And uh, we we came up with this this deal that – this was just one tournament and we were down in Florida or Georgia. We were somewhere. Anyway, Dove set it all up. He was like, everybody stop at the grocery store and buy one meal. We're going to cook for four nights and everybody buy the meal that they want to cook. You with me? You know, what yeah, I'm I, I don't even know. I know where it's going, but I don't exactly know. Yeah. Dude, he did his very best, man. I mean, like he was trying and I got so tickled, dude. So he comes in, he's got, he's got like mashed potatoes, macaroni and cheese and sausage, like smoked sausage links, right? Mm -hmm. The, the pre-cooked already in the pack yeah. of smoked sausage links. The macaroni and cheese is in that box that you just microwave. The mashed yeah. potatoes are in that box. You just microwave. And he had some other kind of pasta that he was going to boil. Anyway, the thing that I remember most, dude, this is hilarious. So I'm kind of watching over him, and and he's he's really in there trying. Like, he's going to do his part on his night, you know, and he's in there cooking. He's in there with those sausages, and he's got those suckers not only sliced, but then he's got them cut halfway, and he's got them suckers in a skillet, and they've been frying for 45 minutes. I mean, he's going to make sure <laughs> they're cooked dead. And I was like, hey, dude, you know them suckers are cooked whenever you open them out of the package, don't you? And he's like, Really? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, dude. I mean, they're just – it was so funny, you know, to see somebody take one of them sausages and just – he was like, man, I don't do this, you know. His wife, his wife cooks. And, and uh, but, yeah, he was he was trying to do his part. And I'll never forget that, man. It was it was cool to watch him to do that. And it was just funny and shit. But, you know, stuff we run into on the road. But, uh, yeah, he, he doesn't care, dude. Like, he literally – like, his favorite meal is like – a flour tortilla with peanut butter, maybe some jelly or something. Well, what? Yeah. Flour tortilla, peanut butter. Like, and not only kind of like his fishing, how he never quits thinking about it. He can eat it three meals a day. So, like, he don't even care if somebody cooks or doesn't cook. Like, he's just fine going in there rolling up a flour tortilla with some peanut butter on it going to bed. What? What? <laughs> what? I've never even heard of that. <laughs> it's different than you and me, dude. I know. We like to eat, but. Well, I mean, I can like, I, I'm pretty good, and, and I'm back home, man. We haven't been fishing like in a, like so, uh, you know, I can I can kind of do a lot of different. Like, I work out a lot, you know, so like I can kind of get on a regimen. But I mean, it, you can't do that on the road, man. And like, that's like the one thing that you can take with us. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can't take your house, right? You can't take much of anything. But what you can do is you can take our cooking. Right. We, you can yeah. take a little bit of that because there is nothing worse than man, like being on the road. And like when I come home and if something happens, my wife's like, Hey, you, you care if we like eat out? And I'm like, no, I don't care what, like, I don't, I don't care what's going on. I don't ever want to eat out because we eat out. It's not that we eat out much, but we sometimes have to eat out, you know, when we're driving, we're, you know, in between places, but man, I, I don't know about eating tortillas and peanut butter. For dinner. I, I, I also think that, you know, like I was explaining, some of some of the cooking time really is it's downtime for me and you. You know what I mean? Like it's it gets our mind off of the grind for just 30 minutes. You know what I mean? And it helps reset me. Man, he, do, what, he doesn't need that. See, and what's crazy is when I was a kid, like 
this is how messed up my mind works. For about 10 years of my life, from about 18 to 28, that, that, I've never told you this. So get ready, for, like, th get ready for this. When I would drive down the road, so all the time, all the time you're driving, if I saw a branch down, like, like in someone's yard or on the side of the road or something, right. every single time, I'm talking about if I saw 500 of them on the way to somewhere, every single time I look at that and go, and that'd be a pretty good brush pile. Like, oh, I wonder if I could, I, like, <laughs> like, like you talk about a You're mind. Say you stop, pick them up or something goofy. It's no, like, no. I just sit there and I look at it and like everyone else sees a down branch and I'm looking at, at this thing like a brush pile and my mind never gets off that. It's just constantly like, yeah. and, and so I, I, I'm like that. I go, I go so hard and think about things for so, for so long that like, yeah, 15 hours a day, I can do it but I need about an hour. I need yeah. an hour or two where yep. me and you are cutting up, yep. cooking and whatever. And yep. because I, it's why those, it's why my coinlers probably hate me sometimes. Cause they're like, that dude never said a word. And I'm like, man, I've thought about 10 different things when on my one cast just now, like, you know, like I, I don't stop and, and I just don't think the only thing is if I'll fish with you or someone I really know, then I never shut up. And then everything that I think comes yeah. out of my mouth and y'all are really going, dude, this guy never shuts up, but I don't mind talking to you because I'm, I'm trying to get what's, what I think is going out on the water out of my head and into your head. And then we can collaborate on maybe trying to figure out what's going on. Two heads are better than one. But if I don't have that person, it's just, it's just going on in my head. Yeah, like I say, everybody's wired different. That's 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 one of the things he's got. Um, you know, he's big on, um, you know, like I'm big on the on the uh, the Google Earth, right? You've talked oh, about yeah. that before. Oh, yeah. I like to lay in bed and like to have my Google Earth time. That's kind of how I get locked back into that. And, and y'all don't understand. Let me tell y'all. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I look over there, man, and he's looking at stuff. <sighs> so, like, me and Holman are different. In the fact that I, I grew up with an older boat that I was scared to death of like putting a putting a scratch on. I mean, I, I'll I'll take it in the woods, right? But the woods aren't going to mess it up. Hallman would be looking at things, and and he will find this four mile stretch of land that's got three inches of water on it. Going found this on Google Earth, man. I think I can run this, and I'm like, no locals don't run this. Like no one. He goes. I've looked it up, man. I'm pretty sure I can. And the next day he goes, yeah, I ran it, man. It wasn't bad. And I'm like, you're the only one that's probably ever done it. Yeah, 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 but it's not bad. And I'm just sitting here going, you know, I'm driving out there in the middle of the river channel, you know, doing red, green, you know, and Holman's like just out there like running across nothing. And I'm just going like duck boats are looking at him like driving by. I'm like, yeah. look at this cat, you know? Yeah. Or it's just this two different mindsets. It is. It is. Um, but Google Earth gets me back on. He, uh, he doesn't use Google Earth like that, but he's on the uh, – he likes the websites, you know, like whatever Bass is posted or FLW is posted, you know, that night, pictures and stuff like that. And articles. Oh, he does that? He likes all that, yeah. You don't do um, that, do you? Man, it didn't just come to my – I just – I don't know, man. I'm just – Scott did it. You know, Scott did that a but lot. Me, but me and you never I, – I never remember me and you ever – I don't – I don't – I don't, I've never done it. I don't think you've ever, I don't ever remember me and you ever talking about it. Yeah. I, I don't know. I mean, there, there's been times in tournaments where I felt like it was worth my while, you know what I mean? To spend and, and I did it then, but man, just, just off the top of the cuff, I just don't think about stuff like that, but I just think it's how different guys reset. You know what I mean? I think well, it's how they get their mind going. That's kind of the same thing. Google earth does to me is it refreshes my thought process of, where I've been, what I haven't seen, what have I missed, um, things like that. I, I, what I'll say is, is so I did watch quite a bit of live, which I rarely do. A little bit of that is because of fantasy. I mean, I had my guys up in there, so I was kind of watching them. Uh, I was pulling for Schmidt, you know, so I was watching him. And, and what, here's what – and I've been to Champlain. So anytime I've been to a place – um, I was looking at where everyone was and I'm like, yeah, I fished there. I fished there. Like, yeah, you know, and, right. and so I was paying attention to that, but 
here's the one thing when we went up there and like I said, I do no prior, but you know, me, you know, me, I do. I'm the least prepared person because I just like to free. I just like to just right. do whatever I do. And I was, I was small mouth like, right. It's just what I thought. And, and that's all I hear about. Now I know Ticonderoga is all large mouth to the, for the most part, but that was it, you know? And so I wasn't going to go down there because I didn't trust the run and the wind and everything. And, and I've never been there. So I'm just going to do my thing up. And I went up kind of where those guys fished, but I don't remember a large mouth being that big of a deal. But when, when uh, Davey height, they talked about the top 10 and they talked about the number of large mouth compared to small mouth that were being caught in this tournament. And I want to say everyone in this tournament was not like they were all at, North, they none of them went to tie, right? So this was all smallmouth waters to a degree, dude. It was like, it, so at whatever it was of of there was ten guys, fit, say fifty fish, forty of them were largemouth. Yeah, but I, I but I was not expecting that. Were you like, well, like they targeted largemouth, and a couple of them, I get some of the guys only targeting them, but it was like, I mean, when we were there. Every, there weren't that many guys going for largemouth or they weren't being, the, am I wrong about that? But it seemed like, yeah, some of the, some of those fish that they were catching were had largemouth kickers in them with some three and a half pound small mouths in their bag. But okay. if you go back and really look at it, they it still had a lot to do with those boat docks and marinas. And um, a lot of times that's those green fish on that lake. Um, no, I know. I just don't remember like our top 10. It didn't seem like that was, well, but half of our top 10 were down in Ty. Ty they were know. that year. I was down there with them. Uh, I was down there with Scanlon that won it. And um, there was there was a lot of fish coming out of Ticonderoga in that and event. It was, and it was Not really weird day. down there. And uh, weird down there. It like, has been. And I said that in fantasy that, that that they haven't been coming from down south. I don't know where I even heard that, but I'd heard that Ticonderoga had not been firing per se, per usual this year. And, man, it really showed up at that Bassmaster Elite Series event. But. Yeah, Schmitty showed out. I, I, you know, why didn't Schmidt go down there? You think? Well, I don't know if he did in practice or not. I didn't talk to him. Um, yeah. Okay. My guess is, is he did not. And the reason I say that is because two years ago when we were there for the tour event, I went and he did not, and I he spent my go. entire practice down there, and he never came, and it surprised me. You know, and of course, then he freak showed him, and he had like twenty one pounds on the third day, and but. They know they know that window. There's a window there when those smallmouth are spawning, certain sections and different places on that lake, and those guys know that stuff. And uh, I think they just – they know when to gamble on certain fish. Now, obviously, those fish at Ticonderoga were worth gambling on when we were there a couple of years ago because it was one down there. But um, it almost wasn't. You know, Thrifty and those guys really pushed them for that. And I know. And then the coast of the following week, I think Thrifty won. Is that correct? Like it was like the very next week and he won the Costa. Isn't that he did, right? He did. He did. He drove back up. He told me. That's right. He called me. He said, man, I'm headed back up there. I'm like, golly, because, you know, that's a 25-hour yeah. 20, drive for me. He's like, no, nah, man, it's only like – I can't remember what he said. Yeah, eight. for North Carolina, it wouldn't be that bad. He, yeah, he said it wasn't – and he told me what, how far it was. I'm like, oh, well, shoot, that's, that's me going across Texas. And then three, and then Schmidt went back up there and won the BFL like the week after that. So, you know, that, that, there, there's something to that. Um, I'll tell you the one that surprised me was Scott. You know, that guy's won two or three events up there, and he's won them largemouth and smallmouth. But they weren't catching them off of beds, were they? There had was to he, be some. But the, the small, beginning. but yeah, but okay. So when we've smallmouth fished, when, when we fished for them on beds up there, 17, 18, 17 and a half to a high 18 is a good bag. Dude, 18, 18 puts you in, what was it, 40th place? I mean, I think that I think that's the problem. It was hard. And then the largemouth deal was such a factor. I'm not saying Scott didn't go for him, but if you misjudge that. And so all of us were down on our weights, correct? Yeah, I think our I guests. missed it. Dude, I was close. I think I missed it by three pounds. But you like were I, low. Yeah, I was three pounds low. But 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 if you'd have taken the three-day weight, you'd have been way off. Cause because 
he had a he had a 60 pounds going in over 60 pounds going into day four yeah so and he just didn't have as good of a day on day four but i'm telling you man i think we misjudged how good it was and if you misjudge sight fishing on smallmouth it's not like largemouth you know largemouth you can like you can blow it out but smallmouth is more of a I'm going to beat you down over three or four days mm-hmm. by ounces. Dude, that wouldn't happen in this place. Like you better come with some big large mouth somewhere in there. Or you're going to get, you better, well, you had to look for 19. And when we were there, 17 and a half was good. It's a big difference. It is. It is. That place is always real tight too. Just like it was in this one. I mean, anytime it fires off, no matter how it fires off the weights, you know, half a pound on down the field is a lot. I mean, you know, half a pound can be 15, 20 spots sometimes in some of those 150, 200 boat fields that we used to fish up there. Um, it's 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 a special place. I mean, I always enjoy fishing there. I'll tell you what, that run to Ticonderoga, Schmidt told me this before I made it, because, you know, every day you're down there putting in, you're putting in. I never had made the run to Ticonderoga in a tournament until a couple of years ago. I usually end up fishing the north end of that lake. But – um the wind wasn't going to blow, and I decided to go down there. And Schmidt was like, dude, when you're making that run, and it's nice, you know, like smooth like it was, and the sun's coming up over those Adirondack Mountains, and you're running 80 miles down there at 70 mile an hour, dude, it is one of the most beautiful sights in America. Dude, it really is. Like, it is freaking impressive, the sun coming up over those mountains down there. Champlain's always been one of my top fives, not just because the fishing's great. I mean, it's got everything. It's got the scenery. It's got the fish. It's it's got it's got everything that I like. I I I have never been there, and and when you hear of New York, when you're from Texas and you hear of New York, you do not think of Champlain and and the mountains and that area. But I I drove up there. It was the only tournament my wife uh, Brittany ever. She flew up. It was the last event, and she flew up. Um, I I know. Uh, I think. Thrift's wife came, Chad Grigsby's wife came, and Brittany um, came, and Russell's girlfriend came. And so, like, they all flew, they all came, and Brittany, I think Brittany and Kathy flew together. But, uh, yeah, we went out on the water, and I was just like, you know, this is phenomenal. What I will say, too, is then we took a three-hour drive uh, west and went over to a little place that uh, they're going to right away. Yeah. Uh, right. They, like, I took, like – we went one day on Champlain. I said, Hey, let's go over here to the St. Lawrence river and see what this is all about. I got, all I got to say is, man, that was, I took a video of that. I, I, I made a video on YouTube of that with just me and Brittany is nothing, but it's just us fishing, but it was probably the best footage I've ever captured really? of just the water and the fit. Like anytime I just grabbed that camera and had her, you know, with another five pounder, and just the fit, like you see the fish the whole time fighting. It, it was uh, that place is really interesting. Just we current are, and and fish on beds, and it was just uh, one day going there. Done. They're going there this week, and like I know the fish are bigger, but I can't imagine that they catch any more fish than what they were catching in Champlain, dude. Like every time live was on, somebody was reeling enough fish. Like if you weren't reeling enough fish, they just moved the camera on. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know how, like when we were there, um, we, from never being there, like literally I put it in at this boat ramp and idled out to this island and put the trolling motor down and Russell was like driving up and I'm over there hollering at him. And I'm like, (laughs) I'd gone about 30 yards and saw seven. And I was going, they're everywhere. (laughs) Like they're everywhere. And you know, obviously we caught some and, you know, you just throw over there and catch one or whatever, but it, it got, it got really fun and we caught a bunch. Um, I, I don't know what really lives in there. Cause that's all we kind of did. Uh, Cause we're just, you know, you're only there for a little bit. So you might as well, whatever you figure out, you kind of just stick with, cause you don't want to take any chances. Although we did drive around and look around at, at heart Island or lover's Island something island i mean there was some that place is pretty neat because of the every island has houses on it it's it's a unique place yeah it is it is i'm looking forward to going too for the opens later this year uh here in a couple of weeks after the elite series gets done with it um i don't know if we should talk about this on something public but it's kind of like 
Oh, I think it's therapy. Place. We don't really care. So back on Schmidt, um, you know, a few years ago when MLF guys made their move and they all left Bass, and, um, you know, it was kind of unannounced to most of the fishing world, especially in the beginning of the year. So they did that at the end of the year that that was going to happen. And Bass kind of went into panic mode. And they started – communicating with different guys through emails. There was guys politicking to get spots come from FLW, the ones that weren't going to MLF. Guys like myself and you and uh, Brian Schmidt, we didn't do any, you know, we didn't do anything. Schmidt had just happened to have 50 opens that year, like just by chance. I mean, it wasn't like it was a plan. It wasn't – he just fished the opens thinking, hey, if I won one, I might make the classic because he had won an open the year before – and had not fished all of them. He fished the very last one at Champlain and won it. And uh, so, therefore, he didn't get the classic spot. And when you do that, the next guy on the Elite Series, the AOI points, goes in that spot. Yeah. And that year it was Ish Monroe. And uh, I don't think Schmidt knew Ish at all personally, but Ish actually sent him like two or three rain suits from whatever rain coat he was sponsored by, you know, at the time and like a thank you card and was like, dude, I feel bad that, you know, you didn't get in, but I did because of what you did. And thank you very much, which I think is a damn cool story for Ish's part and, and Schmidt's part. But, um, Schmidt didn't politic to get in that bass deal. Well, then bass started just inviting like, you know, Clark Winlet. There, there, a lot of people have forgotten this, but there was a lot of guys invited that, never had even fished a bass open in their damn life, right? And you can name them. And and they were just accepted on the Elite Series. And I was pretty hunky-dory at FLW at the time, and I think you were, and Schmidt was, and we all were. But um, Schmidt had, like I say, he had fished the Opens, but they weren't done with the last Open at the time. Like, they'd only fished one of the three because he was doing the Northerns. And they didn't invite him. Like, he wasn't one of the ones that was invited. And I remember telling him, like, up front, I was like, dude, do they not know what's going on? Like, who is who and what is what? Because this guy is like King Kong, and they don't realize it. Like, he had an FLW Tour win, for God's sake. He had seven Costas or six Costas. He had, like, all this stuff. Plus, he'd won an Open, and somehow they just overlooked him. And uh, anyway, he goes on and wins the points and ends up qualifying anyway for the Elite Series. Then he's got to make a choice. And even at the time, it was still a hard choice for him what he was going to do. And, uh, you know, he decided to go to the Elites and left. But, you know, when all that kind of hashed out, it was really kind of a fortunate deal that he had just decided to sign up that year and really hadn't thought much more about it than trying to make a classic. And so then he gets on there. And still to this day, that's kind of why I push him is because they're kind of like, like I say, he's the lowest in fantasy. He's not, you know, I've told numerous of those riders at Bass, I'm like, y'all missing out by not covering him because he's he's going to be something. Like, he's not your regular Joe. But uh, they're starting to see it now, I think. You, that's you that's part of why I beat the drum so hard. Well, you can't have as many. So, me and you have fished Costas and Toyotas, Costas, whatever. Me and you have fished them. Um we know what those are like. So like, there's a couple places around the country that matter, like, right. right, The central division, I'm not taking them away from anything, but like, if you look at it, you got the central, the Southeast and the Texas division. And when you look at those, you will have these guys in those divisions. Yeah. um, That fish the tour, that fish the open, like they fish elites. Like they, like those are, they're, they're just, they're just different, right? I mean, you got a lot of different pros and a lot of different guys. And when you win one, it's a, it's a, it's a big deal. Yeah. When you win multiple ones. Yeah. Um, it's saying something and that guy's one, like you said, well, you can't win that many of them and not be really, really special. Right. I'm just, because they're not, it just doesn't happen. There's a reason why there's a lot of guys with one, one win. There's very, very few guys with two, you know, and when you get above that, you're talking, you're talking, you know, less than, less than five. 
Yeah. And so it's a, it's a big deal. And that's going to carry over because, you know, this is going to be hard for some guys to, some guys are going to like this and some guys aren't, but we've always discussed sometimes trying to win an open. Um, and I would say Toyotas might even, I, I wouldn't say they're harder. Um, but when you, when you have 200 guys, 150 to 200 guys, and you're putting 30 to 40 locals that don't fish anything but that lake and they yeah. get in it. And then you got some elite, you like, then you got locals on, then you got the local guy who's also an elite or a tour guy or whatever fishing. Um, those aren't just like, Hey, go out there and kind of beat everyone. Like you got to be special on some of those days, like, like biggest bag you've ever brought in kind of special. So, I mean, those are, those are tough ones to go. <laughs> that with. is, you're right. That's what they take too. They take like, cause they're just three day events. So you can't stretch them out over four days. Like, you know, a lot of four day events end up being, you can kind of hang on, but three day events, man, you're right. Like one of the first two days you've had one of the best days you have on those ponds. Let, and then, let, let me, and then let, somewhere on day three, it's got to happen again. Let, cause if it doesn't, listen, you don't win. Let me, inter- let me interrupt Riley. So I want to tell y'all something about the home. So the first day, the first time, I ever came to Grand Lake for a tour. It was they were in the Centrals, and I told home and I said, "Hey, I, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna branch out and fish these Centrals because I got to get better at these other lakes." So I I roll up to Grand, and and Holman's like, "Man, this is like, dude, you couldn't have had the more luckiest. Oh yeah, I've never seen the lake like it is. It's crystal yeah. clear. You're going to drum these guys sight fishing, right? And whatever. So on day one, we go out there." And, and, and I was staying with Hallman. We had, you know, we, it was me. It was the crazy, that was one of the craziest times because it was me, Hallman, uh, James Watson, Casey Scanlon, and um, Robbie Dodson. Robbie Dodson. Uh, uh, Robbie Dodson. Yeah. yeah. And, and so we're all kind of staying at, at the little compound. And on day one, <clears throat> I go out there and I, I didn't even have like that great of a day. I kind of messed up. So I'm in, and weighed in like 23 pounds and was leading it. Well, Hallman, like, and I and I say this, and it's not a diss on Holman. Holman weighed in a measly 19, 20 pounds. And I say that because he gets done after day one. And if y'all know Holman, I've just been around him for so long. And it's so funny because it, y'all just, it's hard to explain. But when you get around this guy after a day one, he could, ha- he could have weighed in 40 pounds or zero. But if he gets in his head that he's going to go catch this monster bag the next day, I don't care if he's not caught a fish for five days. He'll get it in his head. He's like, you went out there and showed out. It's about time I do too. watch what. And I'm like, dang, man, like, well, he can just turn around like that. and like, go catch. Why golly, he sure did. And I mean, he goes out there and catches a giant bag on day two and freaking another one on day three. And he like, he freak shows him for two more days and wins this thing. And I'm going, you know, but it was funny. All of us, me, um, all of us in our little compound made the top 10 ex- except Scanlon, but I think he broke down is the only reason. That's right. But That's right. yeah, like Grand Lake was awesome. And you did, I say a measly 19 or 20. Anyone that's from Grand Lake goes, that's not measly. Exactly. But he had to then go freak show him to freaking win that thing. And that's yeah. what it takes on those events. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's so, a lot of good anglers in that one too. I mean, Matt Airy and Jason Christie, that top 10 was was really, really good. Yeah, but I mean that's the way a lot of them are, you know. I mean the opens are that way. All the coasters like that you fish I know. here, Toyotas. I mean, that's what it is. That's 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 what it is. And the tour events are the same way. You get a couple of locals on those ponds, and um, at the national level, same thing. They're they're hard to win. Any multi day events are special. That that's why whenever uh, I don't know why I've gone blank, but Ray Hanselman, you know, a lot of guys almost forgotten about that. Ray's been on the Elite Series for a while now, but. That was the same year that Ray just went on the tear in that Texas division and just absolutely yeah. mauled. I mean, can you imagine three in a row and then go win the damn championship? I mean, I that, that'll that never be done again. No, ever. It will never be done again. You know, after that grand event, we went to Texoma for the Texas division, and I finished second in it. If it hadn't been for Ray and his tear, I'd have gotten two in a row. But uh-huh. he freaking won four in a row, you uh-huh. know? I mean, like, it wasn't even close between me and him. I mean, he blew the whole field out. I mean, he beat us bad. I finished a couple times second at Texoma, and both times have been the same thing. First place has been, like, 
another derby from everybody else. I, the only time I came close was was when I won Toledo, and the next tournament was Texoma, and I had a I had a five four seven seven pound four or five six pound lead going in the final day, and uh, Jim Tut goes out there and catches like freak shows him on one bank down like 30 yards. He's like, dude, I had nothing at 12 o'clock and catches five for 20 and beats me by a little bit. And then the next tournament the next year was on Amstead. And that was the only one that hurt me. That one, that's the one, like, Tut beat me, right? The next one on Amstead, if, say, I had gotten lucky and, and that hadn't happened and won that one because I came in second, the next one on Amstead, I'm leading going into the final day with a seven, eight-pound lead at Amstead. That's and I break team. down. I break down for five hours throughout the day. And uh, I come in second by four ounces, by 0.04 or four ounces or whatever it was. Um, and then the breakdown, the breakdown killed me. I mean, I just I sat in Mexico waters on the troll motor for four or five hours trying not to wash up on the shoreline. But it's crazy how those things will go. And then and I was like, I thought I was untouchable. And then the next three event through, I mean, I just couldn't do I couldn't even make a check hardly. It's crazy how that'll go, how you can get on a roll. And it's like Seth Fighter or Mullins last. It's weird how these angle of the years. God fighters uh, on a roll. Annaberry. Jesus Christ. Huh? That fighter, man. Good well, Lord. It's, yeah, but it's crazy how when they get going, you can't catch them. Like, you can't stop those guys. It, it, it's weird how when you get on that roll, every single decision you make is pretty much good. Yeah. Yeah. It is. Really? It is. It, it, it's hard I, to I, I've never been that. able to stay on it very long. I mean, like, I get on two or three derbies, and then, like, it'll go away from me real quick. But, um, yeah, some of those guys can stay on that thing for – Fighter's been on that sucker for a few years, dude, really. You know, he really has. Um, Schmidt, what? people were asking how he was going to do it this next one. I mean, I, he's going to catch him up here. I mean, he's a is northern he? fisherman. He loves the drop shot. And he loves the spinning rod. I don't expect him to, to top – five it or anything but i mean he could if he got on the right fish if they were going to oneida that's another place yeah. he's got in his wheelhouse dude like he's that's like i don't know it's he's got its number no doubt i would i would have thought in oneida he had to have a way better shot at the st lawrence river is a little bit oh if the um, elite series were going to oneida he'd have a shot at back-to-back -back wins yes no doubt. no doubt that st lawrence river you know that that brings in some different options because you got the river and i don't know where they're going out of but when you bring in erie is it erie no, it's a. Uh, uh, it's not eerie. It's not eerie. Uh, it comes out of sure. Um, well, what? God, we're one that I haven't been on. Um, the same never... dumps into. I don't know. I have to pull up a map here in a second. That's horrible that we can't. Uh, I, if I had never said eerie, we would probably would have gotten it. Now it's got me off track. Well, what is it about those northern things? Because I mean, you know. It's not just – I mean, like Schmidt, dude, he's from Maryland. But he's got the number at Champlain. He's got their number at Oneida. Like, how do you – what's there? Like, there's – it's got to the, – the piece of the puzzle can't be – you see what I'm saying? It can't be that untouchable for somebody to be that far away and to kind of get it and put the pieces together, right? Uh. I think it's like I said, I think those things stay very. I think it's like the Johnston brothers. I think it's fighter. I think it's all them got. So, so here's what it is. I hope I'm not, I hope I'm not telling on anyone, but it's kind of, I did notice fighter last year caught him, right? He can't, did he, he didn't win it. Did he win it or come in second? He came won it. Second. He came real close. Remember Paul and Nick ended up catching those gargantuan small mouth. Okay. So he, he's up there flipping mm -hmm. in those marinas. Yep. Well, that's a, that's a deal. Right. And, and there's not that many of them up there. There's not. Lee Livesey was flipping in that same marina last year. Right. Right. Lee Livesey top 10 this thing. Caleb Summerall. Was it now in some of those marinas? And I think those places you get, and that was kind of what I was talking about earlier about them smallmouth. But but I, this has been the same, so it's not like it's changed, dude. I can I, remember I can remember Dion Hibden, Guido Hibden, freaking winning tournaments I, on Champlain twenty years ago. Same thing. I, I understand, but what, what I'm saying is, is when I went, 
like everyone I knew was just going smallmouth fishing. You know what I'm saying? Yep. And I think that those guys, we have some lakes like Texoma is one, right? Yep. We have, we look, me and you look at Texoma differently than 99, 95% of all fishermen. I agree. Cause we know we have this, we, we know what's going on at Texoma and we fish differently. We go to some of these lakes and you hear about this one way of fishing. And then there's a couple guys that look at it totally different than what you're looking at, right? Like you, like you go in there going, y'all can have all that. Thrift, I think, does this everywhere he goes. He's like, y'all can, 90% of y'all can go do this. I'm going to go chase this. Yep. And when you're the only ones chasing it. It's easier. It's easier. And I think what happens is, is those guys, like you go up there and it's Champlain and I'm going to go smallmouth fish and get my drop shot and go 360 and look for rock boat. And then there's other guys going, man, I can just go, I can go flip this milfoil and do some of this and these dots and crush on them and mm-hmm. catch maybe a big, you know, I yeah. think it's just, I think those guys start, they look at it differently. They, they go to that, like instantly doing that rather than going, Hey, I wonder if this is going to work. Yeah. And I think that mindset's different, you know, and I, I think, uh, I think those Northern guys, like I think the Johnson brothers, when they go to the river and I'm, I bet you Paul and like that, I bet you some of those guys have been doing it a little bit that have success. Zaldane, they're going there with a different mindset than the other guys going, I'm going to throw my drop shot around trying to catch 16, 17, 18 pounds. They're going, I'm out. I'm after 20 to 20 to 23 every day. And they're doing it from, they're doing it from the day they get there, from the hour they get there. That's what they're looking for. But there's always like guys that get, they get that number on Champlain and they've got it for three or four years. Like what Schmidt's doing. Um, Dave Woolack, that is a name that from the past. Woolack had Champlain's number, dude. Yeah. He had it. But what what happens everywhere? It, what it, gets what you teach them. I guess, yeah, probably you so. Think, or that you, that section of the lake gets whatever, and then it's it's no more. And then they they do. I do agree with that. That's the one thing about Champlain I've noticed. So like Scott Martin, he had he had Champlain's number for a while, and um, yeah, those areas of the lakes have changed. I think I think that's a big part of it. I think that that you're seeing it out of different different sections. I, I, I believe I've always we've all you know we've always the behind closed doors. There's conversations that never get made public. And we always talk about the teaching aspect of it. And, and what we mean by that is, is that like, you know, people have some things, you know, you come in third or fourth place, you know, you don't win it, but maybe you don't let the cow out of the bag. Yeah. But all of a sudden you, you have some of those runs where you do really good and you kind of teach some people. And I'm talking about locals, people out there. And, and next thing you know, that, that little thing that you had hidden that was yours isn't so hidden anymore. Yep. And, and it just gets tough, man. And, and you show everyone. And I think that's yep. what goes, that goes on all over the country and, um, and all different kinds of fisheries. Correct. Totally. And, agree. And, and it's, I mean, it's like this flogger became this hot topic, man. It's been around for years. It's a stupid plexiglass glass on a cone. Yeah. But what, what's funny is all these people are like, oh, my gosh. And they're, and they're like, it just so happened that it that it hit perfect for it to work. And then you see everyone doing it. Um, mm-hmm. But it's not something new, but it, it might teach people for a couple of years. Then all of a sudden you might not ever see the flogger for like four years. And six years down the road from now, we're going to look up and someone's going to blow it out on a flogger because everyone kind of forgot about it, you know, like it, it just kind of like, you know, but for, I guarantee you right now they're out there. They all, they taught some people, you know, to go do yeah. this. I, I'm, I'm with you. I mean, I have some of the mindset of what you're talking about somewhat when we go somewhere, like the last time we went to Champlain a couple of years ago, the flogger was a big deal. Yeah. That's what everybody was talking about on the way up there. And that's when I was like, I ain't doing it. I'm going to go to Ticonderoga where nobody else is going and largemouth fish if they'll bite down there. And I got enough bites to stay put, but that's where the tournament was won. It wasn't won with a flogger, you know, and mm. it's amazing how top tens. There were definitely top tens made with it. 100%. Yes. 100%. But you took 70% of the field that did it in practice. So there should be a couple of top tens, right? Correct. Yes. 
But I, I, I agree with that. It's, it's hard to do, but it's amazing how we all get caught up on the same patterns and same stuff and the same mindset going to a place and how a lot of times it is just going against the grain is what's successful. And it's easier if, if you can get – if you can find something going against the grain, the chances of you having it more to yourself are much higher. There, and there's a couple guys out there, man. There's some – there's some guys. I, I, I'm thinking of some guys. Hackney's one. Aaron Martin's. Aaron Martin's. I might have been the number one guy. Yeah. I think. I really think Aaron Martin was probably the number one guy that would be like fishing somewhere, doing something so different than everyone else. Dude, I had a guy comment the other day on one of my videos about something I'd done about the drop shot, and he was asking me. He said, "Do you ever flip?" Have you ever seen anybody or have you ever flipped a drop shot? And it was about the James River where we'd just been, and I was I should have flipped a drop shot more than what I did. We we show up on some of these fisheries that are a lot of times big fish fisheries. And in your mind, you're thinking big bait, you know, aggressive, blah, blah, blah. You know, Aaron Martin's 2007. I went out to California for my first time, the California Delta. And dude, this is frogging, flipping, swim baiting 101, like big fish haven. Dude straight up won the thing four days in a row, flipping a freaking drop shot on the reeds. A drop shot. Um, going against the grain, those big ones would eat it, and he won it doing it. And I know the guys out on the West Coast, few of them are watching it. It's not uncommon for them to win tournaments on a drop shot at the Delta or Clear Lake for that matter. But for us guys in the South or Southeast, like that's just unheard of, you know. But it it definitely goes against the grain, and he fired them big ones up doing it. That was a long time ago, man. I know, and and just way off way off cusp of what everyone, anyone would think. But then he was doing it. Oh, God, I'm going to get drilled for this. So, I'm sorry, guys. I, I talk about things, but obviously I have no idea. Um, I remember the event. I just – was it the Mississippi River? It may have been. I remember one. Where, he almost won one on the Arkansas River in Little Rock. Was Rye. that it? Remember yeah, when he, he was – right across from takeoff and just stayed right there, and Denny Brower and everybody were blocking – Two and three. Is that the one he down. was drop shotting out in the middle of like? No, he was on the bank with it. No, 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 no. He was drop shotting out in the middle of this muddy and like 17 foot of water on like the upper Mississippi or something. Oh my God. And, and guys were like, like, I wouldn't even, you get on some of those rivers like in Mississippi. If you went out there and like graft around, you couldn't even drive probably 10 feet without seeing just random fish. And he's out there just, smashing on them and everyone i think i think from what it sounded like guys were going i don't know if anyone's ever even thought about trying to do so like maybe i'm wrong maybe guys were like oh yeah there's always someone in the bunch that's like oh i've been catching there since you know 48 me and yeah. my pappy but no i mean it, it would i'll put it to you this way everyone was in three foot of water or less he was out there drop shot in mud in 17 foot of water on a river that and just, I don't, I'm just catching them. Just yeah. who does that? Who, I, him, him. Yeah, him. he was definitely different. And he could power fish to him. He could do it all. We all know that. But yeah, it was, he definitely went against the grain. Some of the other guys are the guys that just stick with their guns and what they do. And so whenever what they do is against the grain and it works, they really hit home runs. That's kind of a hackney deal. But I, I, I can see, I can see some of that stuff like, um oh what's his name he, he did good in the event he made the top 10 he's he's struggled really bad Zaldane he's had some weird you know but he's gotten on that mag draft and that swim bait and some of that stuff <clears throat> and it, it's kind of like the Dean Rojas effect you know like Rojas was throwing a frog and and kind of made it a little bit popular and then it's you don't hear about anyone winning it on a frog anymore you know like that mag draft with Zaldane and big swim baits it was hot for a while, but then then you teach everyone. You teach all these guys, and the guy's like, I'm going to go try to throw that around a little bit. And, man, it, those yeah, baits are – all see it. Yeah, those baits are good, but they're not – they're good because no one – they don't see it. And once they start seeing it, right, there ain't that many fish that want to go up there and buy a five, six, seven-inch giant swim bait. And so, um, you know, it's great when they've never seen one. It, it 
it's just interesting. You got to be able to like reinvent yourself a little bit, you know, or, or, or be like a hack, or, you know, some of these other guys, you know, that flip and stuff, they're just, I'm not saying hackney, but some of those guys, like they just better at it than you, you know, I mean, they're, yeah. I'm not saying you, but you know, you're just right. And the guys just have faith in it and trust it. And, and they're like, Hey, this has worked for 40 years. It's going to work another 40 years. Yeah. Yeah. And it does apparently. <laughs> and it does. Yeah. <laughs> Throw that BFE out there and freaking get it done. Yeah. Um, Denny Brower had been started it, I guess, and the rest of them are going to finish it. Yeah. I don't know, man. It's a uh, still got a lot of fishing left for my schedule. Are you going to, uh, you got some opens you're going to join us on the last two? Yeah. We haven't talked about that. So I, I've got, we're fishing that TTO um, deal. That's my next tournament in August. And then um, I think there's like, I don't know. I think there's another TTO before an open. I think a BFL. There's some stuff in September, and then <clears throat> yeah, we got a well, we got the open on um, Smith. Yep. And I'll fish the open on Grand with you. They're basically I, back to back, aren't they? Or like a weekend? Yeah. Or something. And then I got the we got man the problem with us. Oh yeah, that's right. So we had some tournaments get canceled down here because of the high water. Some big ones. Some like we had a. Um, Triple T championship that me and Jason are the lead name of the year in. Um, that thing got rescheduled. They rescheduled it right after Grant. Like, I swear they did this on purpose, but they made it almost impossible for me and Jason to fish. And then um, a Bass Champs championship got re. No, that's that's right there in the middle of Smith. I don't know, man. They 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 put a lot of stuff I got on top of each other. We got a Toyota Series championship. That one's gonna make it, and then more. You know, we got. I've got a lot of big stuff, two opens, some some stuff. But man, they they sure did reschedule some stuff on top of some things. It's gonna make. It's not making us too happy, dude. I'll tell you what I'm mad about is I'm missing all my Oklahoma football this year. Like seriously, with the way the schedules come out this year, with the cancellations. I mean, I'm not making first three or four home games of the season. Oklahoma, Texas. I'm not making. Like I'm not gonna get a sit in my seat at the Oklahoma football game until, like, late October just because it's fishing, 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 fishing. That kind of you don't have anything for a while, right? Are you still out for a while? Yeah, we've got ICAST, fly to ICAST, and then I'm going to fly from there up to New York for uh, the first Open. I'm only a couple of weeks away from from uh, next Derby. It's been a long time, though, man. It's been a long time since we've been fishing. We we got to – me and you got to get you – know, we'll try to get Andrew. We'll try to get some – we'll try to get a little bass singer therapy up there at uh, – at ICAST for sure. Um, yeah. yeah, let's do that. I know me and you're going up the same day. And so uh right, we'll make it happen. Sounds good. I look forward to it. Man, I'm glad I got to talk to you, dude. I, I I was so interested to hear about Schmidt, man, and just like that cat's so different. So uh yeah, I'm glad you hollered at me and thought about doing it because this is uh something we hadn't done, and I think a bunch of guys wanted to see us together. So we got her done for them. Um We'll definitely do a bass anger therapy or two, maybe knock out a couple while we're at ICAST and put some in the can so we've got them there. Awesome. But, um, guys, if it's your first time here, bump that like, hit that subscribe. Something tells me if you've made it this long, you it ain't your first time here <laughs> listening <laughs> to me and Todd. But we appreciate it as usual. And uh, go check out Todd Castle Nine Fishing. Is it fishing? Todd Castle Nine Fishing? Or is it just Todd, it. Todd no, Castle Nine Fishing on YouTube? And, uh, and until next time, we're out of here. See y'all.